Hi YouTube and welcome to my channel. My name is Patrick. You might be wondering, what is the worst Linux desktop out there? There's a lot of stinkers, not all of them are easy to use, some of them really suck, but which one is the worst of all? Well today I'm going to provide an objective answer to that question. So with that being said, let's dig right in. So let's rip off the band-aid. It's XFCE. XFCE is the worst choice that you can make for a Linux desktop for yourself or for anybody else. And I'm going to talk about why in just a moment, but let me get this out of the way. I don't have any, any irrational hatred for XFCE. I don't think that it's dangerously bad. I just think that it kind of sucks compared to the alternatives, and I don't think the developers are too interested in fixing it. So let's go ahead and take a look at XFCE and see what exactly makes it so bad. Now, if you're the type of person to seek out a video about Linux and learn more about it, you're probably quite a curious person. And that's why I'm proud that today our sponsor is Brilliant, the perfect match for the creative person in your life. So Linux is really good for learning about large language models, and it goes hand in hand with Brilliant's courses on the same thing. I've learned so much about large language models in my time using Brilliant. It has really paid off in my personal life and at my day job. Now I'm the most comprehensively knowledgeable person about large language models where I work. It's a really good deal. And the thing about Brilliant is that it helps you get smarter every day. You know, every day you can, let's say you're standing in line at the pharmacy. We all know how long those lines get and you want to do something. So you pull out your phone. What are you going to do? Scroll Instagram? Check Reddit? No, what you do is you whip out Brilliant and you basically play the game. And that's the thing, it's gamified this. It really, Brilliant, using Brilliant really feels like playing a game. And it does a really good job of turning what is usually a pretty boring experience into something that sticks with you and is genuinely fun. One of the best parts about Brilliant is that it helps you build very real critical thinking skills, which seem to be in short supply these days. The whole idea is that it makes you a better thinker rather than just telling you what to think. It makes you better at thinking for yourself. And look, like I said earlier, if you're watching this video, odds are you're curious about computer science. And if that's you, then I'd highly recommend that you check out Brilliant today. The best way that you can do it to support my channel is to use my QR code on the screen or my link in the description. You'll get 30 days of Brilliant for free plus a 20% discount on an annual subscription. So if you want to learn on your schedule, you want to learn subjects that are interesting to you, if you want to become better at thinking, and if you just want to have fun along the way, check out my sponsor Brilliant. Again, just scan my QR code somewhere around here. Click the link in the description or in the pinned comment. Again, you're going to get 30 days of free service plus a 20% discount on the annual plan. Look, if you're a curious person, then now is the best time for you to check out Brilliant. I can promise you, you will not be disappointed. Brilliant's got something for everybody. It's got, it's got math, science, programming, data analysis, and obviously AI. It's a really cool platform and they've done some really solid work there. So again, if you're interested in being better at thinking, now's the time. Click my link or scan my QR code. It'll be one of the best decisions you've made this year. Anyway, thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Now back to it. Alright, as you can see I have an XFCE machine running here. And first thing I want to point out is just how ugly it is, right? I mean, yes, it, it has a bit of charm to it, but if we just go into like the settings here and go to appearance, you know, we have Edweta, which doesn't look right on this for some reason. We have Greybeard, which looks ancient. Greybeard Dark, that's just a little bit better. And then we have these just absolutely rancid options here. None of them really look that good. And a lot of them are broken, like you can see the menu bar right here. And this is stuff that comes default with the, with the Fedora distribution that I'm using here. And it really, 
we, you know something is wrong whenever you get to a point where stuff that's built into the desktop isn't working. That's what we're seeing right here. This is a live session. I haven't changed anything and it's just god awful ugly. But that's not the only thing. It's also really clunky to use. Check this out. If I snap this window here to the side, oh that's right, I can't. By default, what it will do is move the window to a new workspace. Because that's what I want it to do when I drag a window to the edge. That makes complete sense. See that? It just uh, brought it to that workspace and now we're gonna bring it back to that one. Yeah. Not a good experience. I mean, window snapping is a pretty basic feature these days. And yes, there are versions of XFCE that come with window snapping by default. But the point here is that it's often not the default and when it is, it shares a gesture with changing workspaces. It's just, it's just a clunky experience. And then of course you have the, the app menu right here. Again, this is super old school. Like, I can't think anybody would really want to use this. It just doesn't look pleasant and it doesn't feel pleasant to use, if that makes any sense. I mean, it's snappy. In fact, let's take a look at resource utilization because there's a little something to it here. If we just go to Task Manager, you'll see that this is a freshly spun up virtual machine running out of a live environment. And all I have done is open two file browser windows and we are sitting at 700 megabytes of RAM used. Now, why is that a problem? Well, people often say, oh, I'll use XFCE because it's really lightweight. But when you look at KDE Plasma, KDE Plasma uses less RAM on idle than XFCE. <laughs> and it's also faster. <laughs> like it isn't clunky and slow, it's faster and it, it actually it actually implements things properly, and let's talk more about that. So there's a lot of stuff that XFCE should be expected to have that it just doesn't. Uh, so, for example, fractional scaling. Fractional scaling is kind of there in some distributions with XFCE, but oftentimes it's not. And when it is there, it's a buggy mess, especially if you have multiple monitors at different DPIs. Uh, that becomes really hectic and XFCE will often just break completely in that situation. And that's, you know, that's a pretty standard feature to have to support displays at different DPIs. Maybe I'm just imagining that, but it just it seems like it would come up a lot. X11 is a dangerously unmaintained or barely maintained piece of software. It really kind of sucks. X11 has been around since the early days of Linux, and even back then it was considered to be a bit of a turd. But fast forward 30 years, and X and X11 has turned into an absolute clusterfuck of code. I have never heard of people more miserable than the people who have to maintain X11. <laughs> like, they're not having a good time, and it's this sprawling massive code base that's just bloated over the years and it's built on this ancient framework. And the problem here with XFCE is that XFCE has not really made any effort to switch to Wayland's in a meaningful way. It just hasn't. Uh, I mean, Wayland support will come eventually, which is a good thing. But my point here is that it's very slowly happening. And that brings me to my next point. Development of XFCE is really slow. Like, there's not a lot of effort being put into it. I mean, look at their effort to, to port the platform to Wayland. Like, that's hardly going anywhere. And when it comes to something as critical as the graphical interface that you interact with on your desktop, it's important that it gets regular updates to bring it up to feature parity with what you expect. And that really is the my closing thoughts here. XFCE XFCE just hasn't kept up with the times. It was a useful alternative 15 years ago, but I mean, look at it. It's barely changed. It hasn't kept up with modern conventions. Now, if you want something that's clunky and slow and uses ancient software and has an ancienter interface, XFCE is for you. 
If you want something that's lightweight, modern, and not ugly, KDE. If you can sacrifice a couple hundred megs of RAM, GNOME is right there for you. Like, I don't get why people choose XFCE. Maybe, maybe you can change that. In the comments down below, do you use XFCE? Why do you pick it over anything else? I'm genuinely curious. Drop a comment down below. Maybe I'm missing something, which has happened before. But, you know, it, I really just can't see the appeal of it. Bye.